V.S. Ramachandran, Phantoms in the Brain, Probing the Mysteries of the Human Mind. Embark on a fascinating journey into the human brain with the book Phantoms in the Brain, Probing the Mysteries of the Human Mind by V.S. Ramachandran. Explore the intricate world of neurological disorders and unravel the enigma behind each part of the brain. Understand how the left and right hemispheres are specialized for unique tasks, learn about phantom limb syndrome and its link with our internal body image, and uncover the complex phenomena of perception. This engaging summary simplifies the complex world of neuroscience for those intrigued by the workings of the human brain. The Brain and Its Wonders Neurological disorders are the window to understanding each part of the brain. Researchers no longer need to conduct experimental surgery with the advent of technologies such as transcranial magnetic stimulators. Each section of the brain is specialized in distinct tasks, with even asymmetry in the left and right hemispheres. Through these disorders, researchers are afforded the opportunity to understand the brain's complex functions without causing harm. The ghostly limbs within. Our internal body image and physical body can be misaligned, causing phantom limbs that persist for years after the loss of the limb. The phantom limb syndrome is caused by the continued signals sent to the area of the brain responsible for controlling the limb even when it's gone. The brain's representational map of the body is responsible for the persistence of the ghostly memories of the limbs in phantom limb syndrome. Phantom limb syndrome not only affects our limbs but also other phantom appendages such as phantom erections and phantom breasts. Even though the existence of phantom limbs could suggest the existence of immaterial forms, the internal body image is still dependent on our brains, suggesting that it wouldn't survive the total loss of the body. One side neglect. Hemi neglect patients exhibit a profound indifference to the left side of the world. Perception involves many different processes, and not all of them are conscious. Ellen's family noticed some peculiarities that left them distraught after her return from the hospital. Ellen had hemineglect, a syndrome arising from the right parietal lobe stroke that causes one to be profoundly indifferent to the left side of the visual field. It isn't blindness, it's just an unconscious disregard for those perceptions. The author suggests that perception is the result of numerous unconscious processes that work together, and we still haven't comprehensively grasped how they work. While we know that the right parietal lobe is crucial to this process, there are around 30 other brain regions involved in it. Regression modeling can provide insight into which areas of the brain are crucial for particular perception phenomena. Remarkably, research indicates that hemineglect patients' non-dominant brain's perceptual processes continue to work even though the searchlight mechanism is impaired. These processes are unconscious, meaning that the individual is not aware of them. In simple terms, these patients are unable to see or comprehend new objects in the left field, such as a splash of red on that side, but they still view other aspects of the object subconsciously. In conclusion, consciousness is not singular, but instead, the byproduct of many different processes working together. This idea is quite intriguing and raises several questions about the nature of human perception. The Rationality of Delusions when patients with Capgras syndrome believe their loved ones have been replaced by duplicates, they are not necessarily irrational. From the perspective of their altered reality, their delusions make sense. A neurologist's task is not to dismiss but to understand what has changed in a patient's brain that creates this specific delusion. Studies have shown that Capgras patients exhibit no change in their galvanic skin response when they see an image of their mother which indicates a total lack of response from the limbic system. It's possible that the emotional response elicited from the limbic system helps the brain identify who we're looking at. Therefore, when a patient looks at their mother and feels nothing towards her, the brain might conclude that this person is not really their mother, but a copy. The Neurological Basis for Denial A case study of patients with anosognosia, the inability to perceive one's own illness, reveals the neurological origins of denial. Patients with right hemisphere brain damage display a lack of awareness and concern for their paralysis, while those with left hemisphere damage display the opposite tendencies. 
the connection between neurological damage and psychological problems may provide new avenues for treatment. Seizures and Spiritual Experiences Some neurological disorders have a positive impact on people. Seizures can evoke spiritual experiences, which may be due to specialized neural circuitry in the brain. Neuroscience could bring spirituality within the realm of science. Paul had a long-term relationship with God, but he also suffered from epileptic seizures, which started in his early teens. During his seizures, he had extraordinary spiritual experiences, feeling immersed in a bright light, having a sense of oneness with the universe, and experiencing a divine presence. Contrary to the common belief that seizures are only muscular contractions, they can also happen in specific parts of the brain, leading to various emotional symptoms, such as ecstasy, terror, rage, or despair. Some seizures can even be welcomed by patients as they evoke spiritual experiences. The idea that the brain may have neural connections specifically for facilitating spirituality is intriguing, but scientists have yet to determine whether this ability conferred an evolutionary advantage or is an accidental byproduct of developing circuitry. Nevertheless, such questions that have traditionally belonged only to religion are now being studied by science. In conclusion, the human brain has innate propensities for spiritual experiences that we are just starting to understand. This fascinating aspect of neuroscience may one day bridge the gap between religion and science by studying the special neural connections responsible for spiritual experiences. The Science of Laughter Willie's uncontrollable laughter at his mother's funeral is not as uncommon as one might think. Compulsive laughter is almost always associated with abnormal behavior in the limbic system, a cluster of structures involved in producing emotions. Laughter, in its evolutionary sense, may have originated as a way to alert others in a group of a potential threat that turned out to be a false alarm. Over time, laughter evolved to trigger relaxation in different situations. Therefore, Willie's laughter may have been an exaggerated response from his false alarm system to relax him after a traumatic experience. Mind-Body Interaction in Medicine In 1932, Mary Knight went to a doctor when she felt close to delivering. The doctor discovered she had pseudosiesis or phantom pregnancy, a disorder where a woman experiences the physical symptoms of pregnancy without a fetus. This syndrome suggests a profound case of mind-body interaction only happens to women with either a deep desire to be pregnant or a deep desire not to be. However, Western medicine has generally been skeptical of mind-body interaction, though this skepticism may prevent possible breakthroughs in understanding more about the mind-body connection. Therefore, it is time for scientists to let go of their prejudices and conduct thorough research on the topic. The book Phantoms in the Brain, Probing the Mysteries of the Human Mind, delves into the curious world of neurological disorders, revealing crucial insights into the functions of different parts of the brain. Along the way, learn about the theories behind spiritual experiences, the connection between the mind and body, and the potential implications of exploring these phenomena scientifically. By embracing unusual ideas and attempting to understand patients' delusions from their altered reality perspectives, we may unravel the mysteries that lie within the human mind.